let's just sew whatever. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hello for the first time. Uh, today we are making this really simple leather wallet. It is a pattern by Noodle Head that I kind of edited to make it a raw edged wallet. You could use literally any wallet pattern you wanted to, um, but I just wanted something that was quick and then I used the Angelus leather acrylic paints to paint it. So yeah, this is a super fun little wallet. I used heat and bond light to add that fabric and the lining. And then I've got a zipper pull that I designed attached. And um, that's it, just a fun little relaxing video of me painting these flowers on there. And I can't wait to do more with this leather acrylic paint. Uh, this is in no way sponsored by the Angelus Company. I do have a link down below for the paints if you'd like to purchase. It is an affiliate link through Amazon, so I get a very small portion of that sale. If you don't want me to have a small portion of the sale, buy it elsewhere, don't use that link. If you are not subscribed already, I hope that you do subscribe. I post a lot of fun videos here and there. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay, so I'm going to be making this minimalist out of leather only. So I've got um, templates from Tops and Bobbins. And instead of the interfacing piece, cutting it out of interfacing, I'm just going to be cutting that out of leather since I'm not going to have any like sewn edges really. So I'm going to be using this really pretty distressed leather that I got from Tandy um, on their Black Friday sale. So I'm going to start out by cutting this piece. This is for the front pocket that holds the cards. So I'm just using a rotary cutter on the leather. This leather is pretty thin. I would say it's probably like two ounces at most. It's not super thick. And I'm gonna mark out those snap placements. I'm going to be using, um, I think they're called lean link line snaps. It's L-I-G-N-E, um, but I have a an attachment for my um, rivet press that does those. So I'm gonna be doing that. Um, so that is the only piece I'm gonna need for those card slots. And then um, as per the pattern, I will be cutting out the rest of the pieces, but uh, subtracting that half inch seam allowance since I'm going to be sewing right sides together. So I'm actually going to make it like um, a quarter inch seam allowance and then trim it down. So I'm just going to do a quick um, time lapse of me cutting that out for you guys. All right, so for this zippered pocket section, I'm not going to be lining this pocket with anything. It's just gonna be the raw leather, otherwise it's gonna to get too thick. But I've cut it as one full piece, so I just kind of added them together and subtracted the seam allowances. And I'm going to be cutting a six and a half inch box, I think, from this piece. So I'm just gonna kind of mark at that line. And this is one, two, three, four. So it's 3.75 is the center, more or less. So I'm just marking that out. Um, and then let's see, this is seven and a half. So I'm gonna fold it in half again to find that half. Yes, I could math it out, but whatever. All right, so there are my center lines. And then I'm um, gonna one, two, and three. Three inches is my center. And I'm gonna go a quarter above my center line. And we're just gonna cut a six inch box. So essentially I want a half inch by six inch box for the opening of my zipper. 
Um, and I'm using number five zipper tape, so that's why I need half an inch. If you're using number three inch zipper or zipper tape, you're gonna want a smaller zipper. Okay, so then I'm just going to use my rotary cutter to start that. And then I'm gonna grab my sharpest scissors. I always use these for leather to finish cutting this out because it's going to be all raw edged so you want it to be nice and straight so you want to take as many or as few lines of cutting as possible and I'm doing it this way so that there aren't seam allowances um, that are like really thick and add bulk to the wallet. So there's where my zipper is gonna go. We'll baste it in place and sew it down. Um, I am going to use edge coat along the edge of that so it doesn't fray, but essentially it's gonna go like that within our wallet. And we'll have the zipper and then baste the card slots down and our wallet's mostly finished. I am going to use fabric to line the wallet. I think that would be fun. So I'm going to, hmm, I don't know. Well, I could use two pieces of leather together and that might be nice, but I have used heat and bond to attach fabric to leather before so that, um, I don't know if it gives it any kind of waterproofness to it, but it does add a fun pop of color. So I think I'm gonna look through my stash and find a fabric that I want to heat and bond to this wallet really quick. I'm also turning on my heat press so that I can heat and bond, heat, heat and bond it. Um, so yeah, let me do that really quick. Okay, so I've just cut out my heat and bond light. And this is a um, iron-on adhesive that I haven't used in a while, um, only because I haven't needed to, really. But what you're going to do is iron that onto your fabric, fuse it first, make sure you keep that paper on. Um, I chose this, like, um, mossy green polka dot, because you can't go wrong there. I'm going to iron my fabric, of course, and then I will fuse this. I am going to use my heat press, but you can use an iron without any steam. Just like that. Um, and that would work really well. Okay, so I've got my heat press ready to go. I have my heat press set to like 149 degrees Celsius. It's not quite there, but it is warm enough for me to use. This is a Teflon sheet on top to protect it from any interfacing and to um, prevent anything from melting to it. So I'm just gonna press it flat. So you can see it's not quite where it needs to be, but it's warm enough that it'll be fine. So I'm going to lay the heat and bond light over top and this you really only want to press for a couple of seconds and I'm kind of warming it up like so. I might warm it up on the top to get rid of that wrinkle but it goes quick and you can actually like burn this stuff. It's weird. No. I'm going to flip it over so that that fold doesn't stay. And this is only going to need a couple of seconds, five at the most, with a heat press. It might be a little bit longer with an iron, but it's pretty well fused. You don't want it to like lift easily at any corner. And I'm going to grab my leather. Um, did I want to skive this at all? I don't think it'll be too thick, but I think 
yeah, I'm going to skive the edges of this really quick just because I have a skiver and I can. <laughs> and then we will fuse it with the heat and bond light. All right, so this is the leather skiver. This is a really cool machine. It basically just shaves down the skin of the leather that's too thick. So I've got a tester piece here to make sure that I have my settings correct. I'm going to start it out. Basically, you just... Once it's set up correctly, you can just, like, go. It's really cool. So right now it's not cutting anything, so I'm going to lower this knife a little bit. And we'll try again. Sounds like it's working. It's doing something. There we go. Um, so didn't quite cut much, so we'll turn it down a little bit more. Now we've got it. So you can see how it's a lot thinner right there. So I feel confident. You always want to test first before you grab your piece. This is my front flap and I'm just going to skive the top where I'm going to be sewing it in because this will be a raw edge piece. So I just wanted to skive that seam allowance a little bit. And then this is my main piece, so I want to skive, not the wrong way, all of the edges. And I purchased my Skyver from Sunny Sewing Machines. And Garth from Myth Leather Co. Um, did a fun little tutorial with me um, to show me how to use it. Unfortunately, Facebook didn't save it, so I have no way of showing it to you guys, which stinks. But we're going to try and do another video together. Um, if not, he has an amazing tutorial on his YouTube, so if you haven't checked that out, I highly recommend it. He's got some really fun videos. So you can see how that works. And then I'm not going to skive the top edge because I want to edge coat that. But I think we did pretty good. Because I'm not using like half inch seam allowances for this, it's going to be raw edged. I didn't want to thin down the edges too, too much um, so that it would be kind of thin, but that is done. Um, I have this neutral edge flex, which is supposed to be used with other edge coats to kind of um, either dilute it or make it last longer. But I'm actually going to be using it as a clear edge coat to finish the edges of my project because I don't really want to color. Um, and I also thought about mixing the Angelus leather paints I'm going to be using with this to see if that would work, but I don't want to risk any cracking, especially since this is a gift for someone, so we're just going to have fun with it. Alright, so now that we're done with that, I'm going to go ahead and trim off the extra fabric here. And this will also help keep it from fraying. I might even, no, I won't. I was gonna say, I might even trim it down more, but I can afterwards, because I'm gonna be trimming everything after I sew it. But you can see how easily this peels off and the fabric is shiny, that's the glue. So be very careful. I'm just gonna lay it on the project. Nice and square. Again, I don't believe you use steam with this uh, product. But you definitely don't want to use steam with the leather or you'll mess it up. Um, so I'm going to give it a couple seconds, maybe 10 at the most. Honestly, though, it might be too much. But yeah, now it's fused. The leather is a little bit thicker. You want to let it cool a little bit. 
Um, but then, like I said, I'm going to trim it all up in the end. Well, I could trim that now. You want to be careful that it's cooled enough when you're trimming it. Otherwise, you might get that glue all over your scissors and it could get a little bit gunky. Is this something that leather crafters use? Probably not. Um, but I don't claim to be a leather crafter. I'm just a sewist having fun with some leather. <laughs> So I think, I think we're ready to get this sewn up and add our snaps, etc. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is finish off the edges of this zippered pocket. I've taken a lighter to, you can see these like little fraying bits wherever the leather is. And you just want to kind of burn that off so you've got nice edges. Then I'm just going to take a little scrap of something to paint on our edge coat. And I watched a ton of um, like ASMR leather tutorials because breastfeeding is boring. I mean, it's nice, but you, it's boring. Anyway, so I'm just going to pour a little bit into this cap. And I saw a ton of people using these like makeup sponges for edge coat instead of um, like this rollerball tool that gets really dirty and messy. So I was like, hmm, I'll try that. So I bought a bunch off of Amazon because again, I'm just sitting there doing nothing. It feels like. Okay, so I've just got a little bit of that clear edge coat. And I'm just going to very gently pat it on. To let it dry. I might have too much sponge, maybe. So what this does is it just seals the edge and keeps that leather from fraying, kind of like you saw that it was. Um, but it, yeah, it just it finishes off the edge. Makes it look nice. I'm not sure if that waterproofs it or not, but it might also add a little bit of waterproofing to that raw edge. Again, not a leather expert at all. I'm sure I'll get a ton of comments like, this is the exact wrong way to do it. And I'll be like, well, it worked for me. It's fine. So if I were using a color, it would be bad because you could see all along those edges there. But you can also just take your sponge or finger and just gently wipe it away off the uh, top of the fabric anyway. You can see we'll just let that dry for probably about 20-ish minutes. And while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and seal this top edge. I thought about using a color and trying to mix it in with the um, edge paint, the clear. But again, I really don't want to mess up that part of the project. So I'm just gently sealing that in. Oh, didn't realize you couldn't see that at all. <laughs> Go me. So yeah, just sponging that on. Marvelous, and we'll let that dry.
And then the last piece that I want to seal is that front flap. You can see again, I've got some fraying. So I'm just going to take a lighter to it along all the edges. sponge which still has a bunch of that edge flex on it we'll grab some more because why not and then we'll go along these three edges I'm really curious too if this could be used as like a sealant on the leather like a, I'm gonna paint it but I guess it would be really thick, so I probably don't want to do that. I do have a satin finishing paint that I'm going to be using on this wallet for what parts of it I do paint. We'll see. I just really want to paint. <laughs> Actually started my art journey in life as a painter um, and realized it's kind of hard to make money as a painter. So I got into making things and sewing and that's been my life. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and punch the holes for my snaps. These are, that's the name. I got these from Gold Star Tool. However, I, I wouldn't recommend purchasing from them. I've recommended them in the past and people have had a lot of issues with the products they've received. So um, purchase at your own risk basically. And there are four total parts and two press pieces you'll want for these. So there is the top part of the snap and the bottom part of the snap. So I'm gonna need a total of four, no, two each, two of each piece. I'm pretty sure these two pieces go together. And then these two pieces go together. Maybe not. No, I am very wrong. Okay. What a great tutorial. Okay, these two go together and these two go together. Yeah, that is very correct. All right, so these are for the top. That's for that flap piece. And then these are going to be where the card slots go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those holes punched and then show you how to insert these. All right, so I've used a two millimeter hole punch and I'm going to be putting this part into the back. And then setting the cap on top. And repeating that with the other side. Um, it's been about five minutes or so and our clear coat has pretty much dried. I would say it's safe to sew. So then we have to use the setting tool. And I believe that is this one. Yeah, this is the bottom piece. So this goes on the bottom and this goes on the top. So it would be like that to set it. So here is my press. So this goes into the bottom. Gotta unscrew that so that it can fit. And then this piece goes into the top. So you just screw that in like so. 
I gotta unscrew that some more. I usually like it so that I can just, yeah, screw it and unscrew it with my hands because I switch out, well, I used to switch out dies quite a bit. So just unscrew it until fits in all the way. If you need it to be tight, you can just screw that back in. Totally up to you. So I'm gonna lay this on top. Make sure that little post goes into the bottom and then just slowly press until that happens. And now it's set and repeat that on the other side. Oh, find the piece you lost because I dropped it. And you just want to go nice and slow so that, you know, everything's lined up. And press and lift up. And now you've got those snaps set in place. And then we're not going to attach the top pieces until we've got it all sewn together so that they line up perfectly. Okay, so it's been about eight minutes since we applied the sealant to this piece so i feel comfortable saying that we can go ahead and attach our zipper i'm going to use a little bit of double-sided tape i actually wish that i had like eighth of an inch double-sided tape but i'm just going to use this quarter inch and line it up you don't have to go the entire way across the zipper panel you could also do a couple little pieces but i think that's good I'm just going to peel that up. And then lay this over the zipper. And line it up where you want it. I did pre-iron my zipper so that there's no wonky waves. So I'm just gonna slowly stitch across there. I'm gonna use a stitch length of 4.5. I'm using a Tex 70 bonded polyester. Uh, Tex 90 bonded polyester, my bad. Uh, where do I wanna start? I'm gonna start on this edge actually, because I have that double-sided tape to help hold it. So I'm gonna start on this edge, back stitch. I'm just go nice and slow that pocket and as I get close to that zipper pull I'm just gonna slide it a little bit out of the way I cut my zipper a lot longer than I needed it to be so that I can seal the raw edges so that it doesn't fray and I like to zip it back up as I turn that corner so that the zipper hasn't moved at all in a weird way or anything like that. And again, just kind of unzip it to keep that zipper pull out of the way. We don't want to hit it with our sewing machine foot and end up scratching it or anything like that. Gotta unzip it more. my thread zap ultra instead of cutting it to seal that edge keep it from fraying you could also just use snips and a lighter if you would like so I'm going to trim all that down 
And then I can cut my zipper tape to be inside that seam allowance so that it doesn't fray. Also gonna hit that with my lighter. I'm using nylon zipper tape so that I don't need to worry about sewing through it with my machine. Um, but yeah, that is our zippered pocket. And then we're going to lay our card slot flap over top of that, lining it up nicely. And I'm going to use these clips to help hold it in place. Um, in the normal, in the normal, in the sewing pattern, you would baste it in place around the edges. But since I'm sewing everything together, I don't want to baste it, but I do want to add my card slot lines. So what I'm doing is I have a bunch of um, different like gift cards and stuff that we don't use. Or like old debit cards that I use to help me figure out where things need to go. So this one should hold a total of three cards. And I believe the stitching is, it was three inches in the pattern. So I think I need to be like 2.75. Yes, 2.75 from the outer edges. That seems right. So I'm just gonna mark, or is it? Yeah, I wouldn't wanna do two and a half, because then I don't think a card could actually fit. Because a card measures two inches wide. So yeah, I think 2.75 will be good. So I'm gonna use um, a leather marking pencil. You know what, let's just go two and a half. I'm gonna do two and a half. Okay, two in the line between half and 0.75. <laughs> So two and a half and then one more. Yeah, that seems right. I'm sure everyone's like, that's two and five eighths. I'm gonna be like, I don't know what it is. So you're right, I'm wrong. That's fine. So I'm gonna reclip this in place, lining up all those edges. Hmm. I'm debating if I want to top stitch just to add line, like, you know what I mean? If I wanna add a stitch line. No, I don't. So that it like doesn't stretch out over time or anything. All right, so then I'm gonna start at the bottom, back stitch. And then I'm adding quite a few lines of stitching at the top because it's going to be taken in and out of a lot, you know, those cards. So you want it to be very strong. Okay, so let's hope it fits. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, that was the right amount to do. I hope.
So it's a tight fit in the middle, but 2.75, nothing would have fit. So I feel pretty good about my decision. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it may stretch out a little bit over time. So I'm okay with that. And now I want to fold this in half on itself. Well, actually, I think, well, that would be too much up. Yeah. So I'm going to fold this on itself to sew in place on the wallet. And you can see I've cut my exterior just a little bit bigger, and that's so that I can um, trim everything down in the end. I'm going to line that up using clips to hold it in place. And I'm going to sew it down. I'm just kind of giving myself an eighth of an inch seam allowance, maybe just a little bit more to sew that all down. Okay. So there's the main portion of the wallet. It's got this slip pocket back here, and it's got three card slots. And then we're going to uh, attach the flap. And then we're gonna line up where those snaps should go. So I'm gonna center this on the wallet, right sides together. This is absolutely not how the wallet is normally sewn. Again, I'm doing like all raw edges and changing it up. So I'm gonna sew that with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm only gonna sew the width of the panel piece. I'm not gonna go all the way, just the width of that top flap and actually just a tiny, tiny bit shorter so that you don't see those stitch lines on the opposite side. And then I'm gonna baste stitch it down. And I'm gonna create this nice little flap here. So I'm gonna fold the seam allowance down and sew through it. And honestly, what I could do is kind of connect my original stitches come up and then back down. So I think, I think that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'll just cut right next to those when we seal the edges. Does it look amazing? Not quite, but. It's still fun. So the reason I'm painting this after sewing it together is because I didn't want to have spent all the time painting the leather if I did mess up sewing it. If I finished it and I was like, well, this looks like garbage, I need to remake it. I didn't want to have wasted all that time. So yeah. And I would say if I was going to make another one, I would have trimmed down my zipper just a little bit more. I would have clipped that together 
sewed this on and then basted all the way around it so that I didn't have two different lines of stitching to kind of line up. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down. I'm gonna use a super sharp pair of scissors and get a nice straight cut. And that already makes it look way better. Again, you don't want to like lift your scissors up, make a bunch of weird cut lines. You just want to be nice and sharp. Okay. So there's that and then what I'm gonna do is fold this down and line up where my other snap should go and kind of poke those holes so I'm pressing over them and now I've got those marks you can see so I'm gonna punch my two millimeter hole punches and then we'll set the snap the other side of the snap all right, so for this tool, for this part, this is the front. So that's gonna go, obviously, into the front, to the back, and then we'll lay the cap on top. Oh, try that again. Okay, so I kind of wiggle around the cap in place, and then slowly, press this down to set it and it should be good then we'll do the other side of course I can't find it goodness gracious I did find it <laughs> all right so the cap through the top And I do believe there is a way to hand set these, but I don't have the patience for that, so I wouldn't. There we go. And so that just clips in place like that. So I'm going to go ahead and take a lighter to these edges and then use that um, clear coat on it. Okay, so now I'm going to get into the painting portion of this. Hopefully it turns out okay. Um, so I have these three brushes, just kind of like a angled shader brush, a nice detail brush, and then this round brush here. Um, I've got this piece of plastic that I'm gonna be using as my canvas and my palette. And then I just have this little bit of water here to kind of, um, rinse off brushes. I also have paper towels just in case because why not. Um, I bought this kit off of Amazon. I will link it down below. It will be an affiliate link so if you purchase through that um, I get a small portion of that money. And these are yellow or yellow. They're acrylic leather paints that you mix up and then you can um, paint with onto leather and then I have this satin acrylic finisher that you just put over top of it um yeah so I'm just gonna kind of mix up some colors here and have some fun with it I think that's yeah that's about it I'm gonna be making like some yellow flowers onto here this is the finished wallet. I mean, I haven't decided if I want to paint on the front flap at all. 
you know, just like little details or if I want to paint down here or if I just kind of want to leave it on the back. So I think I'm going to do like a little cluster of flowers that'll kind of like overlap onto the front and I might do some outlining in black once it's all dry. Um, we'll see if I want to time lapse this or not because who knows it could turn out terrible because <laughs> I've never done this before. Oh wow that's neat. It's like a nail polish dabber dauber brush. So it's probably not enough, but it's a good start. So I'm just going to kind of blot these and then mix them on this plastic palette that I've got here. I'm going to mix just a tiny amount of brown to darken the shades as well. So I'll zoom in. I'll change up the camera angle for you guys. Who knows if that's how you're supposed to do it. That's just how we're doing it. So pardon me for where we're painting. This is my work desk where I like process orders and stuff, but it was the only clean and bright space I could think of to do this. So just gonna kind of dive in. Um, you probably should sketch out what you're thinking of doing first and then use the white to kind of help make everything brighter. I think I'm just gonna kind of do some flowers here and this will be kind of like my rough sketch honestly so I'm thinking just some little flowers with leaves I'm adding white where I want the leaves to go so that when that dries, I can paint over it. And honestly, you could leave it as just like a, a little bit of flowers. That might be kind of fun. Okay, but I just want it to be kind of like fun all over. Kind of like curving down. So you can see the white definitely helps make it a bit more opaque looking. And you don't want to paint it on too thick, I'm assuming, otherwise it'll take forever to dry. And I actually meant to grab a blow dryer just in case I needed to do multiple coats and don't have time to wait for it to dry. <laughs> Great, now I'm gonna be addicted to painting leather. This is, this is what happens. I get into something and then I don't stop. Oh. So that's what that'll look like. So it's just really simple on the front and then on the back, a little more in depth. I mean, honestly, I could leave it like that and it's pretty, but it's a little too abstract for me to be satisfied with. But I probably won't 
I don't know, I won't add the black outline, we'll see. Because I feel like adding a black outline will just kind of help to define everything since it's so loose at the moment. And I could probably add just a tiny, tiny bit of that brown to help deepen this yellow up so it's not so bright. Yeah, I think painting white where I wanted the colors to go first really would have helped. So I might be able to do that now. I really like how you put paint on a palette just with that little nail polish brush. That's fun. So you just wanna do light, thin coats, like I said. I might text my husband and be like, hey, can you bring me a blow dryer? I don't think a heat press would work, especially with <laughs> the paint, because you would kind of um, schmoosh it. You'd schmoosh it. You don't want to schmoosh the paint. Actually, before I started making handbags, I bought a bunch of bags from a thrift store. Um, well, actually, my parents volunteer at a thrift store that benefits a women's shelter. And, like, all the bags that didn't sell and they were just going to recycle or, yeah, basically throw away, um, I took them and I was like, I'm just going to paint on them. So I used acrylic paint and then sealed it with Mod Podge, and that didn't work out the best, um, but I did end up selling some. <laughs> so that was fun. I wonder if they're still out there in the world. I was actually going to go with like a deeper yellow for these flowers, but I'm kind of digging the pastel vibe that we got going on with that white. So I'm going to add a few more flower sections. I'm really digging this brush, so I'm just going to keep using it. So I'm going to use white to mark those out. doesn't seem like it's taking too terribly long to dry, especially since we've got those nice light coats going. I like it. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit more of the white out because I want to add just a few little, like, I'm going to call them sprinkles, but they're just going to be like little, little dots. Those are probably going to take a little while longer to dry, but oh well. I like it. Um, I guess I'll add them over here. I'm 
And I'm just continuing to layer up that white so that when I put the green down for the leaf, it'll look nice. I'm just gonna use up that white. Yeah, it's drying pretty quick. Not mad about that. So if you want to deepen up a shade without using black, you want to add the complementary color. So that's why I dipped out a little bit of this brown to mix with the green because it'll, it's kind of like the complementary color already mixed in. So you can see it's creating like this murky, mossy shade. And then if I wanted to lighten it, I could add a little bit of white without turning it gray. I'm just making sure to mix that up pretty well. I'm gonna start over here. You can see my awful top stitching when it's this close, but it might be more satisfying for you guys to watch. Oh yeah, that is the green I wanted. I'm just really carefully painting that in. I wanna cover up as much of the white as possible. Since I'm adding Probably adding a black outline to all of this. I'm not super worried about it because I can cover it up, but it couldn't hurt. But if you paint carefully and nice and slow, you can kind of get some variation in your brush strokes with the shading. So I think that looks cool. It looks way better in person than it does on the camera. But you can also just layer it up. Maybe it doesn't look that good in person and I just am assuming it does. <laughs> uh, wouldn't be the first time that I'm like, this looks great. And look at it later and you're like, mm, no. Creativity happens both of those ways, I think, where you're like starting out and you're like, oh, this is terrible. This looks awful. And then later you're like, oh, wow, no, actually it looks really good. And then vice versa. <laughs> Maybe try to add a few more. I put out a lot of green. So I'm feeling like it's maybe a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I feel like I just need one little leaf in this area. Yeah. I like that. Especially since it's like directly on the leather with all that white behind it. So I'm gonna let this dry for a little while and come back to it. All right, so I let it dry for about 15, 20 minutes. And all of this feels, like I said, dry. <laughs> so I'm gonna get a little bit more paint. I want there to be a little bit more yellow. So I'm just gonna mix a little bit more. I'm gonna add a little, little bit of the brown to the yellow and then maybe a little bit of white to make it a bit more opaque. Might regret that. Someone who knows color theory might be rolling their eyes. It's fine. So there's the colors. I'm gonna grab just a tiny, 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 tiny bit of water. Dab it off. I'm 
Okay, I'd say most of that did nothing. Maybe it did. So I just want to, right then, get rid of any of the white. Yellow is a relatively thin color to work with anyway. It's really hard to get like a nice opacity on it. This feels good. And while I was letting it dry, I went ahead and grabbed a, well, I was gonna grab a blow dryer and then my husband was like, uh, you want my heat gun? I was like, uh, sure. So I grabbed a heat gun so that I can build up these layers a little bit quicker. Gonna build up that green a little bit too while I'm here. What's nice is the green and the brown I had on the palette already didn't dry out while I was gone because it was a little bit thicker, a little bit gloopier. Oh yes, oh yes, that's what I like. Nice thickness. So right now we're looking at the third, this is like the third coat on those leaves. And that's the opacity I really like it to have. I speak like I know. All right. One more round of the yellow mixture, and then I'm going to call it as good as it can, can be, basically. And so far I've only used one brush, um, in case you're worried, the brand and whatnot. It's just a nice roundy guy been so long since I painted I've just had all of these forever may not be the brush that it was most suited for but it's working well so who cares well that's yeah pretty well dried it's a little bit tacky but not too bad So yeah, the best way to do this would have been to sketch out what I wanted um, with like a silver marking pencil or um, like a chalk pen situation um, and then laid out the white pretty opaque, let that dry and then paint over it if you want something a little bit more um, rigid. But I was just kind of going for like watercolory and fun. So I'm not all that worried about it. But I would say this is super fun. <laughs> Definitely 
relaxing. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the amount of yellow there is, and I am gonna outline them in black. So I'll go ahead and dry this and then do the outlining. Okay, so this is what I'm using as my detail brush, Royal and Langnickel. I guess that's probably fancy. I, I don't know where I got it, maybe Michael's. I'm just gonna gently dip into the black and roll off the excess. And I guess I'll start on these little guys up front. Oh yeah, the black is super opaque, so this will go pretty quick. I don't think I'm going to add too much definition to these. I still want it to be a little bit abstract in a way. Interesting because the black is kind of resisting a little bit. It's probably because I added the water to it. I didn't necessarily mean to do that. dry that. Okay. It's nice and dry. So I'm going to work on this area. how it's separating on the, the yellow that's already there. Kind of giving it a fun effect though. Shows up really well on just the leather. So I guess maybe you can't overlap colors very well. But it's like almost once you know that, you can kind of use that to your advantage to add some shading to it. So I'm not I'm not mad, I'm just learning, you know. Having fun. I watched a lot of Bob Ross tutorials in my life. <laughs> and that other guy on PBS, I can't remember his name, but I think he was Irish.
So you can see how well it shows up on just the leather portion, and then when I overlap it on the yellow, it kind of gets a little murky. It's, it almost separates, like it resists sticking or something, I don't know. So I just need a little bit more, so maybe this chunk that won't have any water even slightly added might be better at not resisting. Nope, still doing it. Okay. see how I'm using that like odd separation to just kind of shade in areas. Oh, that's a little frustrating. I still like the way it looks though. I think it looks pretty cool. I'll make sure I outline those leaves. And then I may end up adding um, little black dots, kind of like I did the white. We'll see. It might just be too much going on, though. Make sure your hands are clean. You don't get it all over your project. If you get that paint anywhere else. <laughs> So yeah, I'm not sure if you could finish the edges of a project with this paint or not. I feel like you still need the um, edge coat sealant. I like it. So you might just need like two coats over those weird splotchy lines if you wanted to do that. I'm thinking. Because it almost just makes it look like I had a shaky hand or something when I did it. But I am pretty pleased with that. I don't think I missed outlining any section. I'm going to go ahead and um, make sure it's all dry now. Okay. So I'm just checking for any wet spots. Probably could use like a piece of paper to do that as well. I don't see any. I don't feel any. Yep. Okay. So now I'm going to take this flat brush. Um, yeah, there's nothing on it. <laughs> to apply that sealant and I'm just it says to uh, use a paintbrush sponge or rag and apply evenly to leather and allow to dry do not apply excessively or rub for a long period of time so I just I have 
a little bit. It's kind of like a milky substance. And I'm just, I mean, I've just applied it excessively. But I'm going to very carefully kind of sponge it around. And if the paint you're applying it onto is not dry, it's going to smear like crazy. So be careful. You can see how it's kind of pulling right there. I'm hoping it doesn't, I mean, it's satin finish, but I'm hoping it doesn't stay like glossy around the edges. Or that would look really weird. And this is just going to seal it in and protect it from peeling off. I don't think it'll peel off without the sealant, but this is just kind of like insurance. It's flood insurance. You might not need it, but you might be happy you have it at some point. And so far, yeah, I'm, I'm loving these paints. Super glad that I bought them on Amazon like a year ago <laughs> on a whim. Okay, just making sure I've got it all coated nicely. It seems to be drying pretty quickly. I don't know that you'd want to add multiple coats of this or anything. But it says it's a modern water-based finish, which when dry gives a non-cracking, flexible, water-resistant finish to the leather. Acrylic finisher may be applied with an airbrush. Okay, good to know. Um, I am going to go ahead and use the heat gun on this. Who knows if that's a bad idea? We'll find out. Okay, so I think it's pretty well dried. Oh, I love that. Just this little peak. Ugh, it would be really cute to add like two little flowers over here as well, just to kind of even it out. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. This feels really fun. I went ahead and signed it as well, just a little, little bit. But you can see the satin finish that it leaves. It's kind of annoying in a way. Um, but I don't think I would have wanted a mat. But maybe after a while it'll go away. We'll see. But it's not the end of the world. It's still really cute. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I'd love to see if you guys tried to make something similar. Or if you've used it in the past, let me know. Yeah. That's it.